Hello, you are listening to another episode of the As Yet Unnamed podcast. I am Soku, and with me today again is my co host, John. Hello. And you are listening to the fourth and final part of this series where we look at the second wave of new blood decks. Check out the other videos in the series if you want to hear our thoughts on. Well, the other precons in this wave. Yep. So today we'll be looking at the Ministry New Blood deck. Um, the description from the Black Chantry website is This mischievous deck forsakes defense for a strong offense. Your vampire minions use politics, entrancements, and anarch trickery to damage your enemies and evade getting captured by using mind tricks and shape changing. So once again, for the statistically inclined listeners and viewers, here are the stats of the new broad precon. There are 12 creep cards, sorry, not 12, 6 creep cards. All unique, uh, with three, sep- 3 Baron titles on 3 separate vampires. Average capacity of 5.67. So I think that makes all the precon average vampire capacity about equal. Plus minus less than one. Uh, 48 library cards, take it up about 20% masters and 20% like actions and 20% modifiers. So off the bat, it is pretty much close to what the blurb says where it's for sex defense for a strong offense. I think this is also an interesting time to be looking doing the review for this ministry. New blood precon, a uh, couple of things. Uh, one for me is this is also coming off two recent continental championship wins by basically this plus the main V5 ministry precon. So uh, both the Oceanic Continental Championships and the European Continental Championships have been won by very similar decks, which basically just V5 Precon plus a sprinkling of cards from the new Blood Precon. Yep, fair enough. Let's have a quick look at the new cards and notable reprints. Like all the oh, other... I would mention. Yep. I would mention that uh, aside from coming off of the Intercontinental Championships, we are also been uh, braced by a number of spoilers recently for the next wave of decks so uh we do have some sneak peeks into what's coming for the the mini ravnos and the lubric lands and uh let's just say there's a bit of overlap between the ministry and ravnos tech if we recorded this video maybe like two weeks earlier certain cards would have looked a little different from our point of view Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. But uh, let's cross that bridge when we get to it. In about five minutes time, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so new cards and notable reprints, like all the other new blood uh, pre-constructed decks so far, it's just new crypt cards. So the two new vampires, there is a three capacity and up, coach Tyron Soros. It's a uh, three capacity, like I mentioned, and up. Minister with inferior office gate and inferior presence. Uh, I think looking at the uh, the main precon, the fifth edition precon, this is a weenie that is missing, like the, the discipline spreads is missing from that. The precon only had inferior protein and inferior presence. And I think. For me, this is potentially an easy swap out for that other vampire if you needed to. Especially with like Platinum Protocol, you're getting more bang for buck with Inferior Office Gate and Inferior Presence as opposed to Inferior Protein and Inferior Presence. Yeah, Inferior Protein 
also doesn't get you a whole lot. It's mostly superior protean, which gets you all the neat tricks. Um, so if you only had two inferior disciplines, definitely presence and obfuscate would be the two that I would want on a vamp. I mean, fans of Donnybrook would say otherwise, but I absolutely agree. <laughs> Uh, and uh, yeah, like you mentioned before, we're smack in the middle of the spoiler season for the new upcoming set, uh, which includes the D5 Ravnos precon. And I think we haven't seen all the cards yet, but maybe a you know three capacity obfuscate presence could find a home in that deck. Sure. The other new crypt card is Sergio Bueno. Uh, he's the 8 capacity and up Baron of Santo Domingo. Inferior Auspects, Inferior Potence, Superior Obfuscate, Superior Presence, and Superior Protein. And minions with one or more of your corruption counters must burn a blood or life to attempt to block Sergio. I think this art is of the likeness of uh, an old time Vitas player. Uh, yeah, so it's a cute ability, I think. I haven't really seen it come up much. I would say, like, just finger in the air. It's probably really good against cards like Alton and Ty Cooper and uh, what's the Tremere one? Articulus. Articulus, yeah. But outside of it, I'm not so convinced that paying it for a essentially what is a, a crypt that leans younger is for a baron and a ability that you know very often people don't really attempt to block stealth leaders. So yeah, I'm not I don't think it's something that would come up often and paying extra capacity for it is not really something worth doing in my book. But at the end of the day, he's still, you know, he's got three, the three main disciplines at Superior. He's a Baron. Um, so you're, def you're going to at least run one just for some uh, consistency in your Crypt to get a title out there because you do want your Baron tech online. Um, so with that, with the title and the discipline spread, you'd be looking at at least a seven cap, paying an eight for a largely non-effective ability isn't too terrible. I'd I'd still run him at the end of the day. Fair enough. Although he does at eight capacity, he does sort of share the same creep space as Nonodis, who gives you a plus one bleed and a pseudo hunting ground. Gives you a ministry vampire's blood when you play Mastercard. It's yeah, I mean maybe one Sergio and one Nonu or I don't know. It's it, that could even yeah. be an argument to say just two nonus sometimes, depending on how your your creep ends up being. Sure. Yeah, so these are the two new creep cards. Uh, some notable reprints. As usual, I will just do a quick run through of them and a quick list of when they were reprinted before. Uh, first up is Cape of Apples. It was only printed previously in 2007. A Dabbler. This is an, an old reprint. It was reprinted in the Air to the Blood bundle that Black Chantry put out in 2018. But I thought it was worth mentioning it because Devlo is one of the I would say the enablers with this current iteration of decks that are based around uh, the group five six ministry decks. Ray Ray is the next card which was last reprinted in 2005. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly but again bear with me. <laughs> I don't speak French. The next one up is Garibaldi Miyuchi Museum, and that was only reprinted once in 2008. Obfuscate skill card, again, a good place to reprint some of these skill cards, uh, the Master Discipline skill cards. Like, we haven't seen many of them for a while, even if you're not a fan of 
you know, boosting vampires with master skill cards, they have their place in the game, I think. And it's good for new players to get some of it. Yeah, I, I appreciate their, uh, I guess, control in reprinting the master skill cards uh, just because um, some of the older players, they have more than they care to keep a hold of. But just having one or two, well, at this rate, just having one in a deck here and there, I think that's a fine way to distribute them. And the other thing is also sometimes uh, established players forget what they have in their collection and like when they have new players come into the play group even if you're happy to share cards sometimes you forget that master discipline cards are a thing so this also sort of raises awareness i guess for lack of a better term with the newer players and then they can easily just go around and ask hey does anyone have spares most people have some sitting around next up is propaganda Last reprinted in 2006. Waters of Duat, last reprinted in 2005. Anarch Salon, last reprinted in 2003. Reckless Agitation, last reprinted in 2007. One of my favorite reprints in this uh, recon, Revolutionary Council, last reprinted in 2008. And a shout out to Party Out of Bounds. I know it's a very recent card, but I didn't rate it when it first came out. But having seen it in action, I think it's been punching above its weight class. Just a couple of things. It's something that you don't require a Baron, so it's harder for uh, your the other players at the table to, to, to turn off the tech. You can recur it with Garibaldi Multi Museum. And even though it's a 100% defensive card, which I think was one of the main reasons why I wasn't too keen on it when it first came out, it is actually flexible because it covers three separate uh, use cases. Bleed reduction is bleed reduction. Uh, ministry don't actually have a lot of titles. They are, before this, they only had two barons. And then with Sergio, they only, now they have three. It still isn't like really a lot. So having plus two votes helps. And plus one in step, of course, just to deal with the action to recruit Kelton or Articulus or what have you. So these are the reprints that haven't been reprinted for a while, plus a couple of special mentions. Uh, there is a card here that I didn't list, but I thought was a bit odd sitting in the deck. It's Homunculus. All right, so a quick read of Homunculus. It is a retainer that requires protein. Retainer with one life. At inferior protein, during any Methuselah's unlock phase, the employer can burn a blood to unlock, and at superior the homunculus has two life instead of one. So essentially what it does is it, it's like a burn of blood to wake once each player's turn. I mean, in this deck at least. But having to take an action off to do it, I don't know. I would think just another on the Quibi or just, you know, have some, leave someone standing, especially since you've got party out of bounds, is a better option to be fair i'm not against homunculus being reprinted it's just and it doesn't have a home here i think uh i think it quite the opposite because you have party out out of bounds i think that's why it has a home here yeah to give it to a non-baron yeah or yeah a non-baron or a baron um just because we probably have bait and switch as an option as well. Yeah, I don't know. Agree to disagree, I guess. It, yeah, so as you say, it costs an action to put down. And if you're playing a stealth breed, you're probably going to want to spend every action bleeding. So I can see where you're coming from there. But between all the options, you 
they give you between the two decks, the, the V5 deck and the new blood, you can pivot away from being a self bleed and into something more toolboxy. I think they give you enough options between the two to do that. Yeah, fair enough. With Ivory Bow especially, maybe there's something there. Are there any other cards that stand out to you, John? I think Cave of Apples is cute. Naturally, your eyes are going to be bigger than your belly, and you're going to think about how you can protocol a platinum protocol into stealing a vamp with the final bit of Cave of Apples. I don't think that's going to happen realistically, but uh, we'll, it's, it'll be the third time mentioning them this podcast but you know it's perfectly fine for yanking away uh carlton ponticulus or whoever that might be yeah that's fair a uh, bleed and then a just a casual casual i say cave of apples action would, would allow you to steal a carlton or a ponticulus it is quite pricey to put on the table maybe you just keep it in hand until you're it's gonna go off and i think before we started recording you had some thoughts around the garibaldi Muchi museum yeah so uh, this this kind of stems from the thing we mentioned earlier where um if we recorded this episode a couple weeks earlier i would have said oh yeah this this pack i would always i de- would definitely buy a buy a set recommend anyone can buy a set just to get one of these cards in your collection cuz uh they have a home in a lot of anarch decks or even independent vote decks because you can pull back a reckless agitation even if you're not running anarchs that said with the Ravnos deck list being spoiled, we have come to know that it is being reprinted again in one of the Wave 3 decks. So I guess that gives you the option. If you like Ministry, uh, this is one way to get it. Otherwise, if you think it's a bit too many cards overlapping with what's already in your collection, then probably hold out for the Ravnos collection. Yeah. Because that one comes with new shiny toys as well. Exactly. Speaking of the Garibaldi Milchi Museum, if you're a viewer or listener of this episode, let me know in comments uh, what, like how it links to what it does in game. Because I was when I was looking up like what exactly this is, it's I'm pretty sure I'm underselling it, but it is. Just a old candle maker's house sitting in Staten Island that has a memorial statue outside. But yeah, let me know in the comments. What sure someone has some idea, and uh, I would love to learn a little bit of the lore behind how all these cards come together in game. So that was a tangent. <laughs> Back to the episode. So next strategy. How looking, having looked at the cards in here with or without the um, V5 recon, do you think, John, that it's sort of blurb coming from the website where it's like forsaking defense for offense and you use politics, entrancement, and anarch trickery to get up, get through your enemies? Politics, not so much. You're going to have to, I guess put in you know splash a bit from elsewhere to get the politics thing rolling but um yeah it it's certainly a deck that works i mean who's got the chips we've seen them win continental so no one can deny that much yeah. uh yeah for forsaking defense i mean if you can still party out of bounds and bait and switch i don't know how much you're actually forsaking <laughs> but uh <laughs> Uh, you're not blocking, so I, if that's what they mean by that, sure. 
Yeah, that's a good point about the political angle. I think it's got some really strong political action cards. Uh, Reckless Agitation is a six point, it's, it's six beats off the table. Revolutionary Council can potentially take a whole bunch of pool off the table, if not, you know, burning locations, equipment, or whatnot. And those things most times cost pool. So they're very strong political action cards, and it's got a it's because of obfuscate and protein, it's got a significant amount of stealth, but you're right that it it's it, it still needs something else to get the uh, vote through. So so there's a cute thing between reckless agitation and the Garibaldi Michi Museum, where if by some strange sequence of events you have vote lock on the table. Just museuming the reckless agitation back to hand and firing that off is a lot better than bleeding for three. So, uh, and is you can consistently do it every turn. So there is that angle. Is it's, it's a cute thing to have in your back pocket, but it's not like the primary game plan, I don't think. No, because... You're literally just leaning on your three barons, assuming you do get all three out, plus array, which isn't I mean one copy in forty eight or if you mash up the you know the two decks together, so one copy in seventy something eighty cards. You you need some luck to get there. I think you're right though. Like it's a good point, uh, when you mentioned that the museum can take back reckless agitation, or for the matter, it's actually able to take it, take back all uh, the three different political actions that are available in this deck. Because outside of being able to consistently churn out six or more damage, depending each turn, you're also you're also given the opportunity to discard it early on if you don't have vote lock or you're struggling to get votes through. And you don't feel so bad because you know later on. It's like some thought was put into the deck when they were putting it together or something. <laughs> uh, what does it do out here is an interesting uh, reprint, I think. I don't remember, but I think during the Bruja episode, the Bruja New Blood episode, we did mention something about how the revolution. Uh, having a home in not just the Bruha uh, debate deck, but also a bunch of other potential decks. And I think the Ministry was one of it that we mentioned. And we've got a cute bit of interaction here between Child of the Revolution, uh, this card called Crime Think, and Waters of Duat. So, quick read of sort of the cards that are involved here. Child of the Revolution, I want to say Go watch the Bruja episode. <laughs> oh, but it essentially puts a one capacity vampire onto the board and it requires a Baron. Crime Thing at Protean and a Blood Sorcery. Because Vivian the Six have got Blood Sorcery as a cheeky inferior discipline. What it does is it, uh, it's an action modifier that requires an Anna. Only usable after re resolution of a successful action requiring an anarch or making this vampire anarch. So I protein it unlocks this anarch and at Blood Sorcery you put it into play and once each of your minion phase you can put a pool to unlock a radiant. So you can do something like out of the revolution, successful and then you know a, a crime thing and then after the child hunts, you can go straight to what is the doer. And if you do it, just say just twice in a turn, you suddenly go from two to six minions. And with Revolutionary Council, that could potentially be a lot of pool taken off the table. Could even be your VP right there. Sure. Any other cute strategies that you see, John? I think you were mentioning something about the the V5 precon 
you know, if you mash up to two, you can go somewhat toolboxy. Um, sure. <laughs> Did you just convince yourself otherwise? No. <laughs> I mean, so it's not only between the two decks. You're gonna need to splash in a bit more from elsewhere. Are you going to need organized resistance, bait and switch, the party out of bounds? Homunculus probably fits in fine. Um, then they give you all sorts of funny tools like Ivory Bow and Heart of Nijizus. So these are all decent like defensive tech and you, you're still a stealth bleeding clan so you don't have to worry too much about bending over backwards to put in forward pressure. And if you just strike your preferred balance you could you could you don't have to go full on stealth lead. You can break your own balance of uh, offensive and defensive tech and create a toolbox of your own. Yeah, you do get some cute sort of not like at face value, not just straight up stealth lead sort of vampires. Uh, Farouk Al Qadir has plus one strength and superior potence. So that is an interesting something there interesting angle mm -hmm. that said ministry okay so maybe ministry isn't too affected by this but there is that feeling for me at least that the new fifth edition version of uh, the the clans so ministry uh, banu hakim zemezi rafnos and Celebri anti tribute they're kind of restricted by just because this is like the first set where they've got vampires in this particular discipline spread they're all crypt can't really merge with the new the new cards mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and yeah it it's i think part of it is it's why these clans are kind of locked into what they are. Like, you know, Ministry just on paper looks like Stealth Bleed. It plays like a Stealth Bleed. It probably just is a Stealth Bleed for now. And if you want to do something janky, it could be a little hard. So all your toys are different now. I mean, between Office Gate and Presence, or Protean and Presence, you've got the disciplines at least to form a pretty decent uh voting deck is just a matter of if you ever get a crypt with enough titles to really make that hum yeah so what you're saying is presence is good at voting and protean slash obfuscate are good delivery mechanisms <laughs> <laughs> yep who would have thought well i think that basically brings us to the end of the Ministry deck review. I think this is one of the shorter videos we did, but I think it's also a testament to how tight, I guess, for like a better phrase, the Ministry, the current Ministry sort of play style is. Um, you, it's clear on paper what it does, the disciplines do what they do. There are some cute options you can do, but you know, it is a strong clan, it is a strong set of disciplines, and there really isn't much to wax lyrical about the cards. If you're interested to see how a ministry deck is masterfully piloted, go check out the live stream. Uh, I think the uh, European continental one is somewhere on Twitch. I will try to hunt down the link and put it in the description. And the Australian continent, uh, the Oceanic continent is on my channel, and I will put the link in the description below. And with that, I think we've come to the end of the deck review. Thank you, John, for hanging out with us again. No problem. And Happy uh, to be here. Yeah, we hope that you, you, you as a viewer or listener, have found this helpful. And if you think we've missed anything, or if there's something else you'd like to see, or are there any improvements you think we can do for these podcasts? Let us know in the comments or reach out to me on social media. And uh, until next time, see ya!
Bye-bye.